Hey everybody, Bob here, Wrenching with Bob. What I've got is a, uh, a fork seal that's leaking on the right side after a trip, and so i um, got to replace that, and to do that there's quite a bit of doing uh, to make that happen. So we'll step through that today, hopefully uh, make this informative. I'll give you a quick tour of the fork seal kit that I bought with, from BMW. This is the kit number 31428358657. This is the this is the dust seal, right? So the dust seal goes on first down on the fork, and then uh, the circlip would be slid down onto the fork and actually goes up inside this guy actually goes up inside here and clicks into a little slot and that actually holds the seal in place so there's a new one of those and then this is the actual oil seal and that one actually will sit in here and stay in here with uh, the circlip holding it in place and then the the last item here is the is a spacer but this ring then sits on top of the of the seal so that's what's in the kit and that ran me about 45 bucks, I think, in total, out the door, for one for one uh, for one fork. Sure, wish it was cheaper, and that I didn't have to buy some of these things. But eh, once you've got this thing totally, uh, once it's totally apart, you may as well just put in new guts because uh, it's a pain. All right, I'm back with uh, the wrench that I had taken the top off with, which is going to be my holder for this nut. And then I've got a 17 millimeter wrench, which seems a little sloppy on this nut that's up underneath. It may be a 16. Intention. All right, so these guys actually had loosened yeah, as you would expect it looking from the top counterclockwise, right handed thread. I back this off, and I believe. All right, so there's the top. There's what appears to be like some metal circlip in here as well um, that stops about here. It stops about here and starts again here. I got a piece of piece of wood, and I drilled a hole in it that's a bit bigger than the than the shaft of the push rod, so that I've got a way that I can easily have it on here. So here, here's what we're working with, right? I'm just going to push down on the block of wood, and as I do so, right, the spring is is getting compressed, which is releasing the tension at the top. And you can see that there's a circlip there, right about where my arm is. Um, that has to be removed in order to get the the metal spacer out that holds the spring in. So for my next trick, um, I want to try and try and find a way here in the garage with something that's like a shelf that I could compress this thing and set this underneath. So I found the edge of this bench here has uh, just about the right height. So, see if I can put this underneath it and take the tension off off there. So it's under the edge and unfortunately it's bending that thing. All right, doing pretty much the same thing as uh, I've tried a few different times. I've gotten underneath it with my left hand um, with, the, uh, with the slightly curved tool 
as I was pulling it out with the uh, out from the edge with the screwdriver. And all that sounds uh, like no big deal and no big surprise, but uh, it's actually got the it's got the clip now riding at the edge of coming out. But this is definitely going to do the trick. Um, I'd like to be able to show it to the camera though. I think you can see there, I'm up underneath the edge of it and now it's starting to give way. Now I'm going to try and do this also without uh, blinding myself by the thing letting go. So I'm going to put something over the top of it as I'm starting to undo it and there it is. The uh, clip is out. That then makes uh, this guy free. That, uh, that beveled piece can come up and out. And then, then we're to the rest of the disassembly. The clip out, the retaining ring out, and then this pops right out. Uh, there's, I mean, it's not held in by anything at that point. That leaves this whole assembly here, and so that just is sitting on top of the main spring. And now we're now we're down to the spring itself, uh, which is here see in there. So I'm actually uh, holding the towel around the spring as I as I bring it up. There's the factory spring out. Okay with the main spring removed what we have left in here is a support disc and a spacer where the spacer is like I don't know maybe uh, six or eight centimeters uh, tall so I'm gonna pour the oil out and then those guys are gonna come out for when I do this. Alright, so this is the final piece that came that came out, um, and here's the, I can probably separate these two. So that's the left fork. So this one's done. Here we have the right fork, and the right fork doesn't just have a piston, right? It's got the rest of the valving for uh, compression and damping. So the nut that's up underneath here is actually in very tight. I've uh, found an old bicycle adjustment thing for an axle, 17 millimeters again. In order to get this thing off, you've got to have a wrench that's uh, pretty thin. And so we'll do the same thing we did before. Taking this nut off may be required and may not be as simple as I'd like it to be. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but there's some stuff under tension here. I'm going to try to do this under cover of, of this towel. Okay, so there was some tension there, but it wasn't terrible. So we got those two pieces out, and then we'll take this, this, uh, this piece out. So there's the sleeve. This is totally different than the other fork from this point forward. So I managed to do the right fork, actually. It was uh, a little more straightforward than I had thought, and I didn't think to turn the camera back on. Whoops. Um, the only thing that I did that was sort of out of order is that uh, BMW actually says pour the fork oil out sort of first, right, before you actually take the lid off. Then it becomes more obvious where the spring is uh, down there beyond the, the piston rod or, or around it. 
And um, so when I did it, I had already had the lid off and everything. When I poured the fork oil out, the, the spring came spilling out, basically. And then after it was out, I exercised the compression damping you know, rod. And, was, uh, and the purpose of that was just to uh, get as much oil out as I could. So you, you, know, you turn it up and you exercise the rod a little bit and then flip it over, pour the oil out while pulling and, you know, while exercising the rod again because you're getting the oil cycling through the valve that's down there in the bottom. And, uh, and so that helps to get all the dirty oil out of there. So I've got the right fork leg, and the right fork leg is the one that has all the, uh, uh, the cartridge and everything inside of it, the damping and compression. At this stage of the game, I've taken the spring out, and I'm left with, uh, I'm left with this mechanism still inside of the fork. And the, uh, the, repair, manual said, <laughs> the repair manual says that the next step is to loosen the, the bolt on the bottom side and pull all that stuff out. Yeah, so this is a six millimeter down there. To get this out, uh, they say you've got to stick the, the whole fork into a vise which I've got over there, um, so maybe you'll get to see it. Um, I'm going to give it a try without doing that and see if it, uh, if it happens to loosen on me. <clears throat> hey, I got it. Great, I don't have to stick it in a vise, which I'm really happy about. I am concerned about uh, this becoming a, a giant mess. So I'm supposed to remove the bolt and the sealing ring. It was out on the end of it, but I don't see the sealing washer. So now I'm going to uh, just set that in the pan, and then this should just pull right out. <laughs> now for the for the seals. So this is the dust seal. And this part, uh, to, get, to get this to come off is really just a matter, I mean, I already had it off, so it's kind of cheating. Um, but uh, you stick a screwdriver between it and the, and the fork uh, leg, and just give a little bit of a gentle pry, and then move around, around one, uh, you know, like 90 degrees, and uh, give a little pry, and th that'll give you a millimeter or so, and work your way around it. At any rate, uh, so once you get that thing pried loose, you can just slide it down the fork, out of the way. And then the next piece that's, uh, that's hanging out in there, that you may or may not be able to see with the light back behind there, there's a surclip, um, kind of a round ring with some, some funny edges in it that allow you to get a screwdriver in underneath it. And what we're going to do is we're, uh, that, that actually holds the seal, the main seal, inside the edge of the fork. So the main seal is in here and the surclip holds that in. So we're going to pry that surclip out and uh, and then we'll then we'll be able to free the the seal, um, which you'll see next. Really important, however, this tube. If this tube gets scratched by screwdrivers and and implements of destruction, uh, you won't ever seal. Um, so I'm going to try not to scratch the surface. And just pry a little bit, and it's really quite easy. But just in doing the little bit that I just did there. Um, you can see there, right, that here's the circlip coming out, and I'm trying to not have that screwdriver uh, wind up up against the uh, fork leg, that inner leg portion. So there I've got both sides of it, and now I'm just going to work my way. I'm going to come over this other edge, and there you go. So uh, that was really easy, no big deal. Now the seal is next. Um, the trick with the seal um, on every fork that I've done, um, which is a handful, I'm no, I'm no super pro, but is, uh, is that it's basically rammed up inside of this edge right here. This is a matter of force to get this out. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it like this, and then I'm just going to, I'm going to pull the fork out away 
and when I'm successful, the whole thing's going to come apart, and hopefully I don't wind up with oil everywhere. Uh, this usually takes three or four or five tries, uh, depending on how tight that seal is in there. But you can practice getting that out there to where that edge is. There, that's where the edge is, so that's, that's, that's where my arms are going to be when it actually hits the edge. So, here we go. There it is. And there's the oil I was kind of expecting. Alright, so now you've unsealed it. And now in the outer tube, there's nothing left in the outer tube whatsoever. You have the seal and a couple of bushings. After taking this, uh, taking the seal out, right, the seal, the seal is here. And then there's this uh, spacer, which is actually the thing that winds up forcing the whole thing apart. And then we got two bushings. Taking these bushings, and I have rotated them so that you can see see the split in the bushing. We're going to pry pry that open just a little bit in order to uh, allow those bushings to slide off of the fork and that way we can pull all the other bits and pieces off of the fork and replace them with new ones. Again, the idea is to not scratch the tube even though we're kind of up inside of the whole thing and it, it may, be, may be less of an issue way up here. But uh, with a, a bit of a pry there, it's happy to slide upward toward the top of the fork and off. And there it is. Now it's pinching my finger. All right. Um, there's probably some wear to the bushing. In in my case, whoop, I'll show you what mine looks like. So here's here's what my the inside of my bushing looks like. Right, you can see a shiny spot and the coppery spot. Um, I don't see any wear on the outside of the bushing. And then the next one, you can see right. It's got kind of a a shiny metal spot and then a and then a coppery area and then let's get this other bushing off and this one takes this one just slides right off there's no need to spread it and his inside looks perfect uh, it's all gray and now at this point I can take off the spacer and then the seal and this is a good time to get a get a sense for for how this all goes together in these lips. The, the lip that's here where that bushing was sitting inside of, um, that lip is very sharp. And that lip and the, and the edge of the fork lip, which is less sharp, but this is quite a sharp lip, uh, can tear up the seal. Um, the good seal that you're going to put on. I, I don't need to worry about the one I'm taking off, but it's a good time to kind of practice that feel of, of what that feels like. So you don't want to jam the thing all sideways, right, which is going to which is going to compress the sides and make this even harder of, a, of an edge uh, effectively. So you want to take it off, uh, take it off nicely and we'll, uh, we'll protect the fork with a, a plastic bag. Some people use a condom um, and uh, in order to put the other seal on to get that over there without those sharp edges uh, being, being trouble. And now the circlip and the dust seal. We have a inner fork leg that has nothing on it, and so now we're ready to reassemble. So what I've done is I've laid out all the, the four pieces from the kit down here. I've laid the four, the four pieces from the kit uh, down here, ready to go. And the other thing that I did, we'll see if I'm a genius or not. Is, uh, is I took one of the bags that, that the bits came in and I just uh, I took the Ziploc top and I and I cut I just literally took scissors and cut it off and I'm going to use this as my baggie to put over the fork to protect the seal the seals um, as I put them on so I'm literally just going to put this over the uh, over the edge of the fork and then that's going to that's going to cover those sharp edge areas here of, of the, the edge coming in, the leading edge, and then these two edges here 
that are uh, where that bushing goes. There are some sharp edges over here in these holes. I may be wise to stuff all the items onto here, leave them on the bag, cut the bag off, and then slide the whole thing across down down into here. Um, there is a warning in the manual that talks about these being sharp enough edges to screw up the seals. So first things first is the dust seal and the dust seal this extra lip that's here with the spring will be in the down position and to, uh, to aid in this all going on the manual says uh, to lightly oil the inside of the lips of the seal here to get it um, over and so I'm just going to some of the dirty oil I'm actually going to uh, put some on the bag that I've put in here so that there's just uh, a little bit of lube to work with to start with and then um, and then I'll take some here and just put it on the inside here it felt all right and I'm gonna leave it at the edge of the bag here I'm not gonna get it to the all the way to the edge um, because I am concerned about these holes so that's number one number two is the circlip Right, and that one doesn't have an orientation. Just put it on. And then next in line is the main oil seal. And this one you'll need to lube. The orientation for this is that the slot portion here is up. Right, so if I've got the fork like this, right, and the, uh, so this is the bottom down here, right where the axle is, I'm gonna put it on this way and so that's the slotted portion going up and so if we look at it from the other side I suppose you could say there's a slot there too um, but this is much more of a flat alright so I'm going to lube the inside of this guy that first one went nicely and the second one went nicely good that actually was easier than the, uh, than the dust cover and then the last one here is the spacer, I think is the name of it. Put that one on. And now I'm going to cut the bag, the top of the bag. All right, so now that the bag's open, I can slide this whole assembly down by the bag so that I don't shove everything right off of the right off of it. Now this will be the trick I guess. There we go. Not so bad. Great. Now everybody is down past those past those circles and now I can take one at a time, take these guys off the bag and remove the bag. There's the dust seal and the circlip and the main oil seal and the spacer. And now I can remove the protective bag and throw it away. Now it's time for the bushings. Uh, so we've got a, a, a rather large bushing that really fits nicely and easily over the, uh, over the sliding tube. So let's put that one on. And then for the one that's tighter, um, that has the split in it that's going to reside in this in this uh, slot um, We're going to put a little bit of oil on the inside of this guy Before we uh, before we install it so Now we can spread this Spread it as we put it on And then that snaps into place uh, quite positively. And that's it. Now it's time to reassemble the fork. To do this job, you're going to need to have a, some kind of a ram. This is uh, something you can buy at Cycle Gear or, or Rocky Mountain ATV or whatever. This is a pretty simple concept, and what it is is it's it's a way 
it's a way to have something that has some heft and some weight to it that you're going to wind up putting around the fork and then jamming it down the fork in order to jam uh, to force this seal up into the outside portion of the fork, um, getting that into a sealed position. Um, and I'm going to oil, I'm going to oil the outside of this uh, of this seal before I do it, just to reduce friction. And and then once this thing is in far enough that the little groove that the circlip sits in is visible, then uh, then you put the circlip in, and then you do the same thing for the for the dust boot. Uh, trying to take care to not destroy the the spring um, that uh, that is on this on this final little piece. So we'll see how this one works. This is something that uh, I've had sitting around in my toolkit for quite some time that I've used on other forks. Sliding in into the fork, the spacer's already sort of taken taken up residence in there, and then the seal. So the seal is also going in there, but I really would like to take a moment to put a little bit of lube on there. Alright, with a little bit of oil around uh, around the outside of that main oil seal. I'll get that in there as best it will go. Then I'm going to scoot the dust boot and the circlip down to the other end. And then I'm going to use the carpet to, uh, to be nice to the other end of the fork. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to give myself some runway by pulling this up. And then I'm going to jam this guy down. going quite well. I may already be there. But ultimately the real test is if the circlip goes in um, and goes click right into its spot, then then you're there. So I'm going to take the fork cramming tool off and drop the circlip down and then I'm going to try inserting the circlip and it's pretty natural. Again, don't scratch the, the tube. You've gone, come this far. Click. Click. So I got a nice positive click. Um, this is in good shape. I'm, I'm really pleased with that. Um, tool worked great. Uh, sir clips on. And now um, I'm going to put a little lube on the, uh, on the dust boot. Um, around this edge again just to give me a little less friction for stuffing it down in there in the final uh, for the final bit. Alright, so the dust boot going down and I think that this guy's going to again be a really nice size. Hopefully that's the case. Okay, the final bit here, the dust boot um, I've got the I've got the tool sitting on top of that edge of the dust boot, and I'm just going to give it uh, give it. A, I'm, I'm going to try and start easy, right, and uh, not give it all I got, and see if I just get it to pop right on, which hopefully will. It seems like it needs to go. The dust boot needs to go get installed super flat. Right? It's, it's wanting to rotate its way in, which, which lets one side go down, and the other side's all bulged, kind of bulged out, um, and doesn't want to go. One side is happy to be flush all the way down in there, without trouble, and then the other side doesn't really want to do that. Having the weight of the, of the fork coming down on my fingers, and of the jam tool, giving me some good pressure to make it all even. Uh, so that all the way around, it's just about the same amount off. I can give it a good smack. And that did the trick. So just get it even all the way around as best you can. And then 
and then give it a smack. Nicely sealed. You can see there on the edge, right? Sealed all the way around. And so that's, uh, that's complete.